these tax booklets. Um, lots of different institutions bring out these summaries. Okay, so um, they are like ones by the audit firm. So a lot of the audit firms, so PwC, Deloitte, uh, ENY, all of them, um, they generally release these, they're, they're kind of like tax guides, but they're summarized um, and it's basically for individuals and businesses. Um, so the one that I've sent you is actually the one from uh, treasury.gov.za uh, because obviously government is setting all the tax rules and laws of the country. Um, so after today, you'll actually have a pretty good idea of how the system actually works and what government's role is in the big picture. Um, before we start, do you know do you know what's happening next week? Something important? No. What's happening next week? Any idea? It relates to tax. When, uh, okay. In, uh, Every year it happens in end. Feb. The financial year ends? Not quite. Uh, well, it is, it is the tax year, but the tax year coincides with this major event. Um, let me ask you this. Have you done economics yet? I only did first year economics. Uh, okay, that's fine. First year economics is enough. They probably spoke about something important that happens every February. Uh, I can't remember. Can't right remember. Now. No. Okay, have you heard no. of the budget speech? Oh yes. Okay, yes. tell me what you know about the budget speech. They allocate funds to different sectors. That's correct, and. No. Do they, uh, they update tax? Correct, yes. All right, so one of the major, um, let's say, talking points that basically starts off the new financial, well, when I say financial, it's, 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 a, it's a tax year. So I'm not going to refer to financial year because that can okay. differ depending on companies. Um, so, for example, companies can choose their year end. Um, the year yes. end that you're referring to is for an individual. Okay, we don't have a choice. Our year end is the end of February every single year. And it starts, the new year starts on the 1st of March. And the reason for that is yep. it's because of the budget speech. So when you're looking at this tax guide, this pocket guide, this pocket guide was summarizing last year's budget speech. So all these points that you're seeing here was announced last year before the last tax year end. So towards the end of February, government will make that announcement that they'll host the budget speech. And the budget speech will talk to every single point here. But it's always retrospective. In other words, you're always looking at the last announcement. So for example, we're obviously sitting in um, February 2021. Okay, the current tax year hasn't ended yet because the current tax year only starts on the 1st of March 2020. So the current tax year is still ongoing. When we reach the end of Feb, which is the 28th of Feb, then the tax year would close. And then you would have to basically reconcile in terms of your tax affairs for that period of time. All right, so it's important to understand um, that because UNISA is going to test you on what was announced last year, not what's announced this year. Uh, because this year's tax announcement that will happen next week, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's the 25th. Uh, what is today's date? Today's the 17th. No, it's next week, Wednesday. So it'll be seven days. It should be the 24th. Um, but George, uh, yes. you can Google it. You can probably find something next week, either Wednesday or Thursday after they've announced everything it will be big news okay it's, it's always a big announcement um, everybody wants to know what's going to happen and that's why it's such an important announcement it's probably more important than anything else that we've had um, obviously we've had the state of the nation um, maybe you've watched some of that a few weeks back president Cyril Ramaphosa had basically given um, the state of the nation and he obviously updated us on um, coronavirus and the vaccines and all of that so that basically kind of sets the background um, in terms of what's going to happen now when you're actually being uh, presented with the information from the budget speech. Um, so obviously the finance minister, 
uh, Mr. T. Timberweni, he's the guy that's going to be delivering this budget next week. Um, and as you said earlier, you're 100% correct in terms of spending. Um, the spending actually isn't covered in this particular document because it's only looking at the budget. In other words, it's only focusing on the revenue. In other words, income that government is going to be deriving. Um, and all of this, everything that they've got here, comes out of that announcement. Um, here at the bottom of the document, um, I see they have included some highlights. Um, so these are, but, but you'll see, um, these highlights are always tax related. They, they don't really speak to other things like how much is government going to contribute to education or health or safety and security, etc. Um, so we will discuss this after the budget. So I, I'm going to encourage you um, to please watch the budget if you can, or just download a summary of it. But um, because you're obviously progressing with your studies, um, and, and now that you're working as well, and you're studying part-time, um, these things are quite useful uh, to, be, to be aware of, because it, it kind of affects you as an individual, because if they increase taxes, it'll affect you, um, and, and those type of things. Or if they change rebates or um, certain rules regarding your contributions to certain things like medical aid or pension, etc. And then those things have a real world impact on you. Um, and that's why having knowledge on tax is actually quite, quite good because it's very practical. Um, so some of the stuff that we'll be discussing as we go through this course, you'll see it actually relates to you as the individual um, and you can actually apply it um, to your own tax affairs in terms of what you've got to submit um, as part of your role as a taxpayer um, in South Africa. Um, so I just want to give you a little bit of context because it's obviously relevant to chapter one. Um, and that's kind of what we're looking at. So um, I'm just putting this up now because it, it was something that I emailed you as well as part of the additional notes. Um, it's because I refer to this a lot. Um, I don't really refer to the study guide. Well, I do in some instances, but a lot of the time I'm going to be using this because it's, it's a two-pager um, and it summarizes everything quite nicely. So you don't really have to go to um, lots and lots of pages of information where you can just kind of reference what you need here. All right, so you'll see even some of these tables I've taken from this particular document and I've included it in your notes um, because it's what you're going to be assessed on. Okay, so having said that, when we get to past papers, um, the only problem with tax is I can give you older past papers, which I am going to do, but obviously when you look at those past paper solutions, um, those solutions have different tax tables that are applied. Um, so for example, when I had done those past papers previously, obviously I wasn't using those tax tables. Um, so I, I just want to uh, remind you to, to not worry too much about what the actual answer is and focus more on the application of the theory and the knowledge. That's more important because the table will change every year. Um, every year you'll get a slightly different table and some things might change more than others depending on what comes out of the budget speech. Um, so two years ago, 2018, when they delivered that budget speech, that's when they increased VAT from 14% to 15%. And that obviously affected um, everyone and it would have affected the rules and regulations regarding value-added tax. Value-added tax is obviously one of the taxes that um, that's basically um, it's a source of revenue. Okay, it's it's a way it's a way for government to raise money from the public, um, and it's one of the most effective ways. Um, and that's why they've they've raised it. They've increased it. I don't think it'll increase again, uh, but you never know. Okay, it, it it's not something that we can predict or we can um like it's 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 uncertain okay until we have the actual budget speech no one knows what's going to happen sometimes they do surprise us uh, and they they announce things that we're not really expecting and sometimes it is as expected uh, but yeah it's, it's it's a very exciting time uh, because obviously it's going to set the picture for the rest of the year okay not only from a tax point of view but also from an economic point of view and that's why everybody kind of stresses how important the budget is. Okay, so yeah, so just some context. This is a very important summary. Um, you'll use this quite a bit um, when we look at different application um, questions. 
All right. Are, are you okay so far? Any questions? No. Okay, awesome. Uh, all right. So I'm going to go to the notes. Uh, I'm just going to run through um, the first part of um, the slides that you have. Um, okay, textbook. Have you purchased um, the new copy of the South African Income Tax Fundamentals book, the, the, the textbook? Not yet, but Not I, yet. I, I think I'll get it next week. Okay, perfect. Yeah, um, I, I do have an older version of it, uh, but obviously it, I, I'm not going to buy a new um, textbook. Um, so I'm going to ask you to just reference certain things if we need to check. Um, but what I do is I always check it online. Um, so I go to the SARS website and I will um, confirm and um, check if anything has, has drastically changed. Okay, I don't think... Um, too many things have changed since the last time I've hosted. Obviously, tax tables and that, but I mean, that always changes. Uh, but in terms of the core, the core always stays the same. But uh, now and again, uh, one or two things are brought into the actual um, study guide. And the study guide will mention it. Okay, so the textbook is good because the textbook gives you a little bit more depth. Um, and, and the depth is important when you get to specific questions, okay, which... I'm only going to show you much, much later on when we actually do the tax calculations, when we're working out the liability that businesses or individuals would have to pay. Um, but in the meantime, um, you're not going to need it now, but obviously the sooner you get it, the better, um, because if, if we can reference the newer version of it, it's always, um, it's always good. Um, so if you can get that, that'll, that'll help quite a bit. Um, assignments I will do with you. Obviously, I'll let you know ahead of time. Um, when we will be when will be uh, when we will be doing the assignment um, and then that gives you some time obviously I want to cover the theory first and then once we've covered the theory then you'll be able to do the assignment and then when when I cover it with you um, it's just a matter of you checking and seeing well are you on track okay so I think you're you're kind of used to my um, my style I guess I, I'm gonna call it that and how and how I, yeah. I, I host the um, the classes um, so I think I think you'll be fine. Um, tax is a really nice subject. It's very, very practical and it's very logical. Um, if you like law, have you done any of the law subjects at UNISA yet? Uh, I think I did commercial law. Okay, nice. That's good. Um, so when you did law, you would have been introduced to different acts. Um, and that's very, very important from a tax point of view. Um, tax is actually very, very similar to law. Um, the, only, the only difference is in law, you don't do calculations. In tax, you do. Um, but the but the calculations that you do is based on a specific act. So you have an income tax act. Okay, you have a schedule in the act that refers to value added tax. Um, you have all these different components. They, they are practice notes that SARS will actually release. Um, those they don't examine at this level, but those are examined much, much, much later on. Um, if you do decide to take more tax subjects, obviously. Um, the depth becomes a bit more, um, how can I say, focused. So you really dive quite deep uh, into specific topics um, if you decide to do more specific tax modules. Um, when looking at the outcomes, you'll see Study Unit 1 is quite a nice overview um, in terms of how the South African tax system actually operates. Um, there is some mention to other tax systems, uh, but you don't have to worry about them. You'll see other places in the world. Tax is not unique to South Africa. Every single country in the world has some form of tax system. And the reason for that is because every government in the world is going to require some sort of uh, source of income. And that's something that we need to understand and we need to appreciate uh, because you'll see that, yes, we might not like paying tax, but if you look at the big picture, it's actually very important that we all do pay our fair share because if we don't, um, it's not going to help, um, how can I say, improve the country or it's not going to help a better society in a way. Okay, and we'll, we'll get into those discussions a bit later. I've got a few um, questions to, to, to ask you to consider. Um, just a few other things to look at uh, in terms of scope. We'll discuss what the differences are between direct and indirect taxes. There's lots of different types of taxes. You'll see a list later on. We'll also classify taxes. Okay, value-added tax. I spoke about one of those types of taxes. Um, if you 
I don't know if you saw on one of those um, pages that I showed you in terms of the summary, the budget guide, there was a fuel levy. Um, if you've ever put petrol in your vehicle, there's taxes on that. Um, you spoke about flying. Okay, if, if, you, yeah. if, you book, if you book a flight on an airplane, there are taxes for that. There, uh, there's travel taxes, or um, I, I don't think travel is the right word, but there are taxes for that. Uh, there's, I, forget the, I forget the exact, uh, airport taxes, all of that stuff. Um, there's such a lot of tax, and, and literally government taxes almost everything. Um, but some of it is direct, some of it is indirect. Okay, or if you book a holiday, there's a certain tax that you have to pay on the holiday that you that you book. Um, so there's lots and lots of different types of tax, and we'll see some of them. Um, just remember that this is an introduction. Okay, so um, when I say introduction, I'm not only referring to study unit one. I'm referring to this whole course. Um, if you actually look at tax two six or one, you're looking at the principles. In other words, you're looking at the um, the fundamentals, the 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 basics. And then obviously, depending on how many other subjects you do later on, um, you just basically take these fundamentals and then you dive deeper into specific taxes, that's all. Uh, or applications. You might look at businesses in more detail, or you might look at individuals in more detail. Uh, it just depends on what you're studying or what you're required to study as part of your um, degree. Something else to consider is the legal precedent that's applied in law uh, and this is very similar to what you've covered in your commercial law subject where they talk about the law of precedent and how acts and laws and rules that are, or judgments I should say the judgments that are passed in court those judgments have precedent and basically it, it has a spillover effect on future um, court cases and, and, and how those judgments are, are reached. Yeah, so that's also something that's discussed in this particular course. Um, and the reason for that is because you do have to refer to certain cases. There are some cases that you have to use as the basis of your discussion um, when you are given longer written questions. Uh, because it's online, I'm not too sure if they're going to give you everything as multiple choice or will they still give you like written and then submitted and that type of thing. We'll have to see later when they give you more information. Um, but in the past, when this was written on, um, on the, well, in an exam venue, okay, on campus, then obviously students would have to remember and recall the facts of certain cases to then build that into the discussion. Um, so the same thing applies here. If it's online, it's obviously easier because then you can just reference your notes and you can say, okay, that case, discuss that point, and then I can just bring it into the discussion. Okay, so for longer theory questions, um, UNISA is going to want um, that level of detail. Um, and this kind of talks to that point, okay, the legal precedent rule. And then the last point in terms of the outcomes, um, you do need to know what the framework looks like. So you'll see when we end um, the notes, uh, this particular set of notes, um, I've given you a template. Um, and that template is important because every single tax calculation that we're going to be doing irrespective of what we're calculating. It could be taxable income, it could be the normal tax liability, uh, it doesn't matter, but the point is, you're going to be using it as the, as the structure, okay? The, it's, it's almost like IFRS, when you're looking at accounting, um, what does a statement of financial position look like? Um, the same thing gets applied here, okay? There's a template, and we just follow the template, we follow the rules, um, and, and I'm just trying to draw something, or let's say, I'm trying to highlight something that you know um, that we can relate to, so it makes this a bit easier. Okay, so it's just a framework. It's, it's literally the layout. So when we do calculations, we literally copy-paste the layout, and then we can just answer questions based on what we've been given in the actual information. Okay, so far so good? Okay, yes. Great. Now is your time to talk. I have a few questions to ask you. Um, I just want to see how much you actually know about tax. In other words, like, um, it's, it's purely, there's no right or wrong answer, so please don't, don't stress about that. Um, you can write notes if you want to on these slides. Um, on some slides, I have hidden answers, um, and I'll reveal it when we go, um, and you can maybe just add that to your notes. But these are just discussion questions. So, number one, Cheryl, what's your view? What is tax? Like, what do you think it is? Uh, if, somebody, if somebody had to ask you what is tax, how, how, how would you answer it? What would you say? 
I would say it's like a charge or uh, an amount of money that you have to pay to the government. Something nice. along those lines. Correct. Definitely. It's definitely a charge. Uh, it is an expense. Okay. Businesses view it as an expense. If you can recall your accounting when we did close corporations and companies, um, close corporations specifically, uh, you had profit before tax and then you had tax and then you had profit after tax. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it is an expense. It's something we have to pay, and, and everyone pays it. Businesses pay it, companies pay it, trusts pay it, everyone pays it. Okay, foreigners pay it, locals pay it. It doesn't matter. Um, it, it's something you've got to pay as part of um, either doing business or as part of your responsibility towards society. Um, do you know why it's important? What's your view? Uh, I actually remember something along the lines of I think that there's certain services like the army or the police or yes. even uh, roadworks that the government has to oversee, even courts, Correct. where civilians are like, on our own car. Yeah, we on our own can't contribute to or so it's like more like to get things done in the most equal way possible. Yes. I think. Yeah, it, it's definitely equality in terms of everybody paying a portion of it. So as you said, courts courts are important for the country yeah. because courts basically uphold the rule of law and those courts have to be paid for by someone we can't ask one or two companies to Each pay for person. it yeah, yeah we can't ask people to pay for it so everybody has to contribute to it and that's exactly what you're saying which is correct yeah so it's important because of public goods and services even um okay. the airport so um you, you spoke about uh training and becoming a pilot those airports are actually paid by us uh, by everyone not not just us but by everyone we all contribute a piece of the pie and then that pie gets split and that's exactly what we're going to see next week um your government actually tells you how big the budget is do you do you, do you know how big the budget is no idea okay it's close to two trillion rand Okay. So a few no, years thought, ago, thought... yeah, a few years ago, the budget in terms of revenue, government collecting money from the public or from everyone, um, it it reached the trillion rand mark a few years back, um, and now every year the budget is over a trillion, um, and it's closer to two trillion now. It might even be over. We don't know. We need to see what the real numbers are, but it's 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 approximately plus minus. It's a two trillion rand budget. So in other words, uh, how big is a trillion? It's a million million. That's how big it is. Okay. A billion would be nine zeros. Okay, so budget, um, well, government, in terms of its budget, government has two million million rand to allocate. And they obviously allocate that to different areas. Um, and... We spoke about why tax is important. If it wasn't for tax, government wouldn't have 2 trillion rand to allocate. Well, when I say 2 trillion, I'm, I'm referring to approximate, plus, minus. Okay, the budget is plus, minus 2 trillion. Okay, it might be a bit low. Obviously, with COVID and stuff, it probably is. It's probably somewhere between 1 and 2 trillion. But uh, when, when South Africa actually reached this mark, uh, it, was quite a, it was quite an achievement. Um, so we'll talk about the role of SARS and what their role is. But for government to collect over a trillion rand from, from, from everyone, from, from the tax system, um, it, it's impressive. Okay, it's a very, very impressive uh, achievement um, that government can obviously, um, uh, how can I say, be proud of. Uh, because the more they collect, the, the more they can do. Um, and that's part of this whole discussion here. Why is it important? Um, second or third question, rather, who pays the tax? Everyone. Or oh, everyone yes. who works, I would say. Everyone that works. If you don't work, do you still or pay that, tax? Or, or like purchases. Everyone who like purchases and works pays tax. Because, I mean, there are some people who are underage who don't pay tax. Really? So if you're under age, you won't pay tax? I mean, you're not purchasing things. Well, remember, 
You could be an underage trust fund baby and you could inherit billions of rands from your That's family true. trust. Every hey, everyone. Yeah, so uh, be careful how, how you, um, how you, how can I say, um, so like you said, underage people don't pay tax. <laughs> But do underage people, so if you were at school and you went to the shop and you bought a cold drink, would you pay tax? Yes, but I meant like everyone who purchases. That was my perspective. Oh, okay. Uh, well, like if I bought, so let's say, let's, let's assume you didn't buy a cold drink, you bought fruit. Would you pay tax? If you bought an apple. Do you, pay, you do pay tax on perishable goods, right? No, you don't. Yes. Not on no, you apples. Don't. Apples, zero percent, zero rated. Okay, so I knew something about perishables. So you don't pay tax on per perishables. Ooh, again, you need to be careful how you use these words. Perishable. Perishable means food. Uh, what happens if I yes. go to Woolworths <laughs> and I buy and I buy um, apples that have been cut in a nice plastic container and I just open and eat it? Would there be you tax, would on tax on that? It's still an apple, but it's cut up for me. I just open and enjoy. Would you pay tax okay. on that? I assume so. Yeah, you would. So if you had to buy Woolworths apples that are chopped up and ready to eat, there's 15% VAT on that. If you bought the whole apple and, it's still, and it was still purchased from Woolworths, a whole apple wouldn't have any tax. It would be zero rated. Okay. Um, I'm sure you remember, or maybe it's a bit uh, too too long ago, but in, in um, let me think of the module, 1502, FAC. Uh, did you not cover VAT in, 15, um, in 1502? You should have. Okay. Input, output? Oh, yes, 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 we did. Okay, you did. So, obviously, input and output VAT was examined or tested in that module. Um, I, yes. I, I know for sure that it, it is covered in 1502 um, FAC in, because in accounting, you account for input VAT and output VAT and you need to know when input VAT is applicable. So obviously, if I'm buying fruit, okay, when I say fruit, I'm, I'm talking about the, the whole apples, the, the unprocessed products. So if I'm buying fruit that's unprocessed, in other words, the, the actual apple, the banana, okay, um, all of those items are zero rated not all items are zero rated though only some are and then you've got a whole list of different items that are and items that aren't um, and and that's something that you would have to have applied um in your fac module uh but we don't look at that um in this particular module but it's definitely something to consider okay value added tax is a form of tax who pays it everyone okay even Okay, well, technically, a, a baby doesn't pay tax because they're not purchasing the goods, but the baby's <coughs> consuming the baby food. Okay, baby food would have tax on it because baby food is processed. It's not raw. It's not unprocessed. So just be careful um, when you're talking about people that buy perishables. Um, it depends what perishable. Some perishables have that. Some perishables don't. Some perishables are 0%. Um, in terms of VAT, some perishables are 15%. So it just depends. Um, next time you go buy something, um, just have a look at the slip and see, did you buy anything that had 0% or anything that was exempt? Sometimes you also get exempt products, items that don't have any tax on it. Uh, but you're probably only going to see the 0% um, on those items. So when you go to the store and you do buy things, um, just maybe just out of interest, just look at the till slip and see... The classification you'll see some things that that um, actually have uh, they normally put like a little hashtag or it's an asterisk uh, an asterisk or something but they they use a um, a key um, on their tool slips they have to okay those businesses uh, woolies have to identify okay what's zero rated and what's um, not zero rated in other in other words what's standard rated okay so the best answer here is everyone Okay, and um, everyone pays tax, even people that die. When you die, okay, at your death, right, there's going to be taxes that's paid there. 
don't know if you're aware of that. It's called estate duty. Okay, so even dead people pay taxes. Everyone. Okay, the best answer is everyone. Okay, unborn children can pay taxes if they have inherited um, um, a certain amount of assets from their um, family members or, or others. So yeah, so the best answer is everyone. Okay, foreigners, if you're an American, if an American comes to South Africa, will they pay tax? Yes. Exactly, yeah. So everyone, foreigners, locals, babies, dead people, everyone. Okay, it's, it's literally, you can't get away from it. Uh, there's a quote that they normally state that um, in life, the only things that are certain is death and taxes. Okay, it's, it's, it's one of those things that, 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 that people look at as being like a definite. Okay, I mean, everyone dies eventually um, and everyone pays taxes in some way or another. All right, when do you pay taxes? That's another big question. Every day. Or you pay taxes all the time, though, literally. Okay, again, you need to be specific. So if you're talking about every day, every day, what taxes do we pay? You're right. You just need to be more specific. You pay like, okay, when you purchase food, you pay tax. Yes. When you uh, fill your car, you pay tax. Yes. You pay tax for everything, literally. Correct, yeah. So it, it, it depends, oh. but... Um, if we're referring to tax time, for companies and for individuals, um, there's a specific point in time, and that's why we need to talk about the tax year. Um, so you mentioned it earlier in terms of the, the end of Feb. Um, that is the tax year, which is correct. Um, and that's an important time because it's tax time. Um, and and you'll, you'll learn more about that and what the implications are. Um, are you a registered taxpayer? Am I a registered taxpayer? Yeah, so in other words, uh, because you started working, um, have you registered for tax? I'm still studying. I'm not working yet. Okay, but, but uh, earlier I was under the impression that you were uh, studying part-time, so working full-time. But it's, the other full-time is the other degree, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so I misunderstood. Okay, I, I I thought maybe this year you were you were working and studying, but that's not the case. No, I'm, I'm just studying. Okay, both sides. got it, got it, got it. All right. Um, have you ever done any part time jobs in the past? Vacation work, part time work, anything like that? Yes. Um, yes. Have you ever received a pay slip in the past? No. Seriously. Okay. So the the work that you did was totally temporary. It wasn't like. Um, you, you never got a pay slip for it. You never paid pay no. to earn. No. Okay, all right. So these are things that you're probably unfamiliar with, but things that will definitely come up um, as, an, as an employee. Okay, all employees. It can be temporary. A temp, even temporary employees, uh, in actual fact, should pay pay as you earn. But it's obviously in line with the rules and laws of the country. Okay, depending on how much work they've done and how much they're getting paid. There are specific rules that govern that. But yeah, just to keep it simple, if you've done part-time work, uh, as long as it's for a registered company that's obviously got all their tax affairs in order, um, they should be collecting pay as you earn on your salary or your wage. Um, and that would be contributing towards the fiscus. That's what they call it. Okay, the fiscus is, is what you'll hear about next week in the budget speech. Okay, it's just contributing to government, in other words. Okay, so, pay as you earn. When do we pay tax? Generally speaking, okay, it's throughout the year, so you're right. It does happen all the time. But um, this when is obviously in inverted commas because it can relate to different things. So, something that you'll learn about later on in this course is provisional tax. That's something that applies to some people, not all, and to some companies, not all. Um, it just depends. So we'll look at that and we'll discuss what that is. Uh, but the when is subjective. Okay, it depends, it depends on what we're looking at. So as you said, every day if we buy something and it has VAT, it is a form of tax that we're paying. Every day we fill up our vehicle, there's a fuel levy. That's a form of tax. Okay, so you're right. We're going to look at lots of different things later on. 
Okay, what needs do individuals have? Like basic needs, food, water, shelter. Okay, anything else? Security. Okay. So, all right. So you've, you've spoken about two different things. Let's, let's keep food on the one side and then let's keep security okay. on the other. Okay. Right. Who must provide for those needs? So who must provide for the food? Uh, I would say government, but I feel like people also need to provide for themselves. Okay. Uh, that's, that's an interesting answer. So you would, you would, <laughs> you would say that government would have to provide us all with food. No, that's what I'm saying. But then there are people that are in different circumstances that would need to be provided with food. Okay, maybe you're referring to like a grant, but a grant isn't for food necessarily. A grant is just to support the individual. That individual can decide what they use that grant for. Sometimes the grant can be for maybe a child. Sometimes the grant could be for like a pensioner, someone that's not working. So the grant could depend on a lot of different factors, but, but, but yeah, so uh, obviously an individual would have to provide food for themselves. Yes. But the security, okay, security can be different. So obviously um, you have private security, but I don't think we've got private security. I mean, none of us are walking around with bodyguards, right? Yes. Okay, well, yes, you might but have you could, private security yeah, in terms of your home, but that's different. That that's that's not the security I'm referring to. I'm referring to like people, like 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 bodyguards, like police. Yes. Who would have to provide for the police? The government. Yes. Yeah. So it's impossible for us as individuals to hire our own police. That, that that's not possible. Okay. Can you imagine if every single person in the country had to have their own police? Yeah. It's not no, realistic. No. Okay, so yeah. certain goods and services, certain needs, you get public and you get private. So public needs, okay, versus private needs. Okay, so public needs or public services, that's the right way of describing them. Public services or public goods. And I'm, I'm sure you've probably covered this in economics, where they talk about public goods and services. Yes, yes. All right, so with those public goods and services, that's what we're talking about. So in economics, you probably spoke about, like, um, how, do we, how do we provide everyone with the most access to those goods and services? So more, more in terms of satisfying the needs. Um, and that's kind of where economics comes into it. So economics is looking at those, the, the satisfying of those needs and wants. And how do we do it economically? Um, in tax, we're not looking at that. Okay, in tax, we're looking at how do we pay for all those needs and wants? How do we pay for those public goods and services? That's the difference. So when you're looking at tax, you're not looking at what's the most economic way of satisfying the most needs and wants in society. That's economics. In tax, tax 2601, we're looking at how are you going to fund it? So in other words, where are you going to get the where are you going to get the money to pay for all those pu public goods and services? Right. Uh, do you see the context? Do you see how everything kind of fits together? Yes. Yeah. So when you do different subjects, it, it all has a slightly different view. Um, in accounting, you're looking at accounting for the tax. So in accounting, we record input VAT. In accounting, we record output VAT. There we're record keeping. There we're not looking at the rules and laws regarding tax, who pays for it, who contributes it. That's not what we're looking at. Um, it's slightly different. So accountants account for it. Tax, we look at the funding, where does it come from and how do we administer it? And then the economics is what do we actually use it for? Okay, the needs and wants. All right, how do we achieve the needs and wants of all our citizens? So like how so the question you're asking me how do we? They're open questions. Yeah, there's there's no right or wrong answer. I just want to get a view. So what would your view be if you were the president? How can you achieve everyone's needs? So if it was 
If it was President <laughs> If it was President Woodley <laughs> What would you do President Woodley If you were theoretically Running your own country What would you do How would you achieve Everyone's needs I think you'd have to put Like a system in place And allocate I'm talking about Like the money Like allocate Funds according to The different systems Or the different needs Yes Yeah So um, obviously, it's, it's difficult, right? You can't always satisfy yes. the needs and wants of everyone. Do you agree? Yes. Correct. Okay, so when you're looking at this, it, it is subjective. As you said, if you were the president of your own country, you would ultimately have to make a decision in terms of how much you contribute to um, different parts of the country. All right, so yeah, that's definitely something to consider. Um, I've got some answers here just to reveal individuals there security you mentioned it earlier and then basic needs as well you also mentioned so that's really good okay self-realization this is looking at stuff that basically takes you higher up maslow's needs of wants i don't know if you've ever covered maslow before have you sounds very familiar i think i might have okay yeah you might have covered in business management or operations or even like business studies at school, that type of thing. But anyway, um, Maslow talks about the hierarchy of needs. Obviously, food would be at the lower end. Okay, self-realization or self-actualization. There's a whole, uh, there's a few words that describe the top. Okay, the highest level. The highest level would be your dreams. Okay, and then obviously security would be somewhere in between. So obviously the basic needs, food and shelter, those are basic needs. And then you move higher and higher up the chain in terms of needs and wants. Okay, so some people, as you said, um, who must provide for those needs? Some people struggle just to provide for their basic needs. Other people can provide for all their needs and don't need any assistance from government. <coughs> Sorry, I, I, had, I had a, there was some sound there. Was that a question or a comment? No. Oh. Okay, there was a yeah, there was some audio. You didn't say anything. Did you did you not want to comment on anything? No, 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 I didn't say sure. anything. Okay. Yes. All right. So, just in terms of tax, when you're looking at the system, you'll see that if we're looking at providing those needs, you have to look at all those different parties, the role players, the um the roles. I'm just going to call them roles. Okay, what roles do all those people play? Okay, so if you look at the country as a whole, right, take South Africa as a whole, okay, there are so many different needs and wants, and there are so many different role players as well. And obviously, every single individual, every single company, every single partner, every single NGO, every single government entity, okay, local government, provincial, whatever, okay, um, the highest... Uh, levels of government okay everyone has a certain role and everyone has a responsibility because you can provide some of those needs on your own okay you can in other words you can satisfy some of those needs you can take care of some of those needs and some of them you can't All right some of them government need to take care of like the roads okay are we supposed to build our own roads no definitely not Okay, but it's something we need. Okay, so government's responsibility, local government, provincial government, um, that's a role or that's a need or a want, depending on how you look at it, um, in terms of society. And then the last bit, when we spoke about all our citizens, okay, remember, is an individual going to be helping all the citizens? No. Yeah, it's impossible for one individual to help everyone. You can help people that you are uh, maybe in close contact with, friends, family, whatever the case might be, but you can't help everyone. So whose responsibility is it? It is government. Okay, acting responsibility for the benefit of the country. Right, and that's how we're going to achieve needs and wants okay, for everyone. Right, so there's, there's an important distinction. The reason why I'm, I'm emphasizing government so much is because you'll see what their role is just now, okay, when we look at the actual course content. Right, so there's the word government. We just said government is required to help everyone. That's their role, okay? 
government, and, and we're, we're looking at across the world, okay, all governments around the world, um, and, and that you can actually see now because of what we've, we've gone through and we're still going through, um, this whole global pandemic, um, governments around the world have stepped in and those governments have helped um, the people, the, the desperate, the people that, that have lost work, the people that have died or been infected by the virus, etc. Okay, so there's such a big responsibility placed on government. And when looking at tax, we're bringing in the finance part of it. Okay, so now that you have a good idea of what government's role is, now we need to focus on this. Okay, how do we actually fund it? How do we, how do we generate enough resources, money, in order to achieve everything? So what they do is they create these different taxes that are applied in the country. Okay, sometimes they're called duties, sometimes they're called taxes, sometimes they're called levies. There, there are different um, terms for it. Okay, but the point is, all of it is income for governments. That's what it ultimately is. Okay, it's a form of income. Okay, government can't work. In other words, government doesn't have a job. Okay, individuals work, companies work, companies do stuff. Government doesn't. Okay, the only source of income for government is taxes. There is another source of income, but I don't want to call it income. It's not income. What's the other source of funds for government? Do you know? Oh, I do. Wait. This, uh... Think about it logically. Where do you get money if you had to get money? Loans. Yes, good. Okay, so government also can take out loans, and that's what they call debts. Okay, that relates to your accounting. Remember debt and equity? Yes, yes. Okay, so equity would be what the country can generate on its own. That would be taxes. That would be, inverted commas, equity. What government loans would be considered debt? Okay, and when you're watching the budget or when you're downloading a summary of the budget speech, okay, pay attention to Tita Mbaweni's speech next week because he is going to talk about government debt. It's a, it's a huge, huge, huge concern. And it's, a, it's even bigger now in terms of um, a concern because of COVID, because of lockdown, because of um, global pandemic and all of that. Um, there's, a, there's a huge debt burden on the country. It's definitely going to be discussed in next week's budget speech. So those are things that you can now listen to and you can appreciate and you can actually understand because you've covered accounting, you know what a, you know what debt is, you know what equity is, and hopefully after today you'll have an idea of how the system works. So you'll have an idea of what tax is, you'll have an idea of what government's role is, and you'll know why they're delivering this budget speech. How many of these taxes are you familiar with? Um, capital gains tax is covered in this subject. Okay, you will cover it later. So that one we can tick. That one you'll know later. Turnover tax is also covered in the subject. You'll cover it later on. Dividends tax, it's mentioned. It's not covered in detail, but it is covered to some extent. Value-added tax, we just spoke about. That one I'm going to tick. Okay, estate duty I actually gave away when I spoke about death taxes. Okay, when you die, your estate. Your estate means what you have in your possession. Okay, in South Africa, when you die, there is an estate duty tax that's levied on your assets when you die. Okay, and that's why very, 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 very rich people have trusts. Because trusts are a way to try eliminate some of the burden on their estates okay, when they die. Okay, so when they die and they leave all of that riches to their loved ones, um, it's generally left in a trust rather than given to the individual. Because if they had to pay estate duty, they would lose a fortune of their wealth um, because of this estate duty. Okay, so that one I've kind of told you about. That one you don't cover. That one you won't see. Do you know any of these other ones? Yes. Which ones do you know? Tell me the ones you know. There are others wait, wait, as well. These aren't the, it's not a complete list, but these are the ones that the textbook kind of refers to in the, in the, in the theory. Um, I just want to know, excess uh, duty, is, is that the tax that you pay on like alcohol and... Yeah, sin taxes. 
Yeah, you're referring to yeah. syntaxes. Oh, okay. Yeah, excise and customs is generally for import export. Okay. Yeah, okay. but you're not wrong. Uh, that's another form of tax. We can add that to other syntaxes. Do you drink? Do you smoke? No. You don't do either? No. Okay, so government doesn't collect any sin taxes from you? Yes. Okay. Do you know any of the other ones? Transfer duties. Yes, this tra is on. Duties. Sorry, say that again. Is it not on? Property? Yes. Okay, even when you buy property or when you sell property, there's a certain tax that needs to be paid on the transaction. Okay, airport taxes, hey. there's it. Air passenger tax. Yeah. Okay, when you book a flight on a plane, you have to pay taxes. And then I, I know, the only one I don't know is securities transfer tax. Okay, this I is when you buy is. shares in the JSC. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, there, there are certain taxes that are paid on those transactions as well. Okay, because it's like buying anything else, but you're just buying shares. Okay, okay. okay. unemployment I, I know is when you work, you pay a certain portion to UIF. Yeah, this is, this is not quite a tax, but it's a contribution towards government's funds because government will use the UIF um, in certain instances to compensate people that can't find work. And, and for the first time ever, this was used for a global pandemic. Okay, that, that yes. you might have been aware of uh, last year when we had the hard, hard lockdown. Um, government had, they even had a TERS fund where they basically gave yeah. assistance to companies to help pay salaries and wages for employees that were out of work or that work or that couldn't work. Um, yeah. So, so I mean, we're, we're in unprecedented, uh, unprecedented times where um, government is using some of their funds. See, finance. Okay. And, but UIF can also apply to someone else. Uh, who? And this is, actually very, this, is re this is actually very relevant to you as well. One day. Sorry, what was your question? Um, when can UIF apply to, no, uh, to just normal individuals? I'm going to be more specific to maybe help you, to women specifically. Uh, oh, uh, when they're pregnant. Correct. And when they have to go on maternity leave. 100%. Yeah, see, you already know, you, you, you have a good understanding of that. So remember this, okay, because this is practical stuff that you can benefit from based on rules and laws of the country. Okay, if you, and, and remember, this is on top of your company's paid leave and all of, all of that other stuff. So um, irrespective of um, your, your, your place of work, as long as you've contributed UIF, um, if you are on maternity leave, you have that UIF that you can actually claim as, it's not a lot, but it's something. I mean, it's something that, that, that you, you, you're entitled to. So if you're, if you're pregnant and you go on maternity leave, um, you are actually allowed to claim UIF. Obviously, you need to meet the requirements and you have to put in an application and you have to go through the process, but it's part of the funds that government has that, that, that does what? That meets the needs of society, that helps people. Okay, obviously, government wants to help uh, mothers uh, uh, when they're going through pregnancy. Okay, does that make sense? Do you see like the big picture? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. And then what is an SDL? Have you ever heard uh, of a skills development levy? I'm sure I have. It Does that have to do anything with the CTAS or not? Correct. Yes, it does. Yeah, so um, those CTAS are generally funded through the SDL because government requires companies to pay a certain portion of their revenue towards a skills development levy. Again, inverted commas, it's a form of tax. Okay, it's not quite a tax because it's not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. Okay, and this levy can also be used by those companies that pay it, but it's only used for training and, and upskilling. Okay. Yeah, so you mentioned CETAs. Yeah, CETAs are, are, are a special government entity that focuses on training, and those CETAs can access those funds in certain scenarios depending on how they're set up, etc. Okay, it is quite a specialized field, but you're 100% correct. Um, an SDL would be a contribution towards those types of things. Okay, the training, the skills, etc. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. 
Can you think of any other taxes that we haven't mentioned? You already mentioned one, sin taxes. That's good. Uh, we did mention fuel tax earlier. Fuel levy, that's another one. That's good. Yes. Nice. Okay, anything else that you can maybe think of? Just off, off the top of your head, yeah. Not really, right? Donations now, no. tax? I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's it, it's in it's in the actual summary. Did you know when you donate something? Uh, oh, sorry, I need to close that. That's something else. Uh, this page. Okay, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Donations. Do you know that there's donations tax? Now I do. Okay. Even yeah. when you donate, obviously a certain portion of it isn't taxed. But if you continue, so for example, here. Deductions in respect. Okay, in other words, can you claim a deduction um, for that? Uh, all of this will make more sense later on when we cover more specific applications. But companies can be subject to tax um, if they donate in excess of a certain amount. Um, so those are things that you need to consider. Donations tax is 20%. That's high. It is, but... That's something that's relevant um, in terms of government's ability to collect revenue. Okay, so there's lots of taxes. Here's another one. Donations tax. Uh, okay, this one was on the uh, this was on the notes. This one was on the notes. This one was on the notes. Um, okay, yeah, uh, I don't think there's anything else here. Okay, VAT, I think, was on the notes. There's their state duty. Yes. Okay, what is their state duty? 20% on the first 30 million, 25% above 30 million. So when you die, if you've got 30 million rand worth of assets, government will take 20% of it. If you're a super wealthy individual and you have over 30 million in assets, when you die, government will take 25% of it. That's another form of tax. Okay, so you can see that there's a whole bunch of different taxes that apply in different scenarios. Um, if you look at the tobacco here, tobacco and alcohol, okay, it was referenced here. Excise duties, there we go. Okay, sin taxes, you mentioned it earlier. Okay, import exports. Yeah. Okay, if I'm if I'm uh, importing wine from I don't know France, obviously there's going to be excise duties and custom duties. It's going to be very expensive to import wine. Okay, because wine is considered alcohol. Or if I'm bringing tobacco from another country, same thing applies. If we're importing Cuban cigars, okay, there's going to be excise duties, sin taxes, and customs duties. All right, it's, it's a lot on export imports. Okay, anything else? Yeah. Are you happy with that? Plastic bag levies. Here's another one. That's, a, that's actually, actually a good one. Because um, there are other countries where you go to like pick and pay, like Swaziland as well, where you okay. get the plastic bags. Carry on. What did you say so about you, Swaziland? When you go to pick and pay or spa, yes. Yes. you don't pay for plastic bags. Oh, you don't pay? So don't pa pay. Uh, plastic it's bags free. are free in Swaziland? Yes. Okay, interesting. In Zafrika, we only, get taxed. Yes. So you basically pay for the tax on your 100%. plastic bags. Oh, okay. So, so you're saying that it's part of the price of the goods. So in Swaziland, the, pr uh, the goods will be more expensive because there's an there's a inbuilt tax for the plastic bags. Is that right, if I'm understanding you? Okay, I don't know about that, but I know when you go to Swaziland, there are things that are a bit more expensive. Okay. Uh, because you obviously have to import them from here. Okay. But you don't pay for a plastic bag. Okay, you don't pay all. for plastic bags at all. Interesting. And, at all. And, well, I have, uh, but you don't pay. Yeah, and... Um, and in terms of like, okay, I've never been to Swaziland, but um, uh, is the environment like clean and stuff? Because plastic bags, the reason why government is taxing it is because of litter as well. And, and, and global warming and all of that stuff. Because it harms the environment. Uh, no, but it, it is more clean than here, I would say. Okay, that's, that's interesting. So maybe there's, there's no need to, to, to penalize the, the shopper. By tax yeah. And it, it, it might not be something that the government in Swaziland is implementing either. Because remember, these are things. So this plastic bag levy, this was something that was announced once upon a time during one of the budget speeches 
Are you aware of that? No. See, but that's, that's why the budget speech is so important. Because um, had we watched that budget speech, it would have been announced. And then they would have said, government is going to tax plastic bag. Oh, here's another one. Sugar tax. Have you heard of that one? I think I have. Okay. Do you I like drinking cold this. drink? No. Okay. So if you do buy cold drink, Coca-Cola, um, Pepsi, all of that uh, stuff. Okay. Those. That's why they used it. I remember, I remember reading something about that. Yes. Sugar tax. Because okay. Coke doesn't have as much sugar as it once did. Correct. Yeah. So if you, if you buy soft drinks now, because the sugar tax has been around for several years now, um, obviously companies have had to adapt and they've had to change because if they keep the amount of sugar in those drinks, they're going to pay a lot more tax and those things are going to be a lot more expensive. Okay. And see, um, Cheryl, that, that was announced at the budget speech. They made that announcement during one of the years and they said they're going to start taxing sugar products, um, cold drinks specifically, and other. It's not only cold drink, though. It's sugary drinks. Are you still there? Are you happy with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Does that make sense? Can, can you kind of see the big picture? Yes. Good. Okay. It's important to, to kind of see how everything fits in because then when we look at the detail, you'll see it's actually quite easy to, um, to, to, to understand. Okay. First thing we need to look at here is government's role and SARS. All right. So let me ask you this. Government needs to follow specific rules to administer tax. Okay. Who sets the rules and who administers the tax? Uh, SARS administers the tax. Good. What does that mean? Explain. So they... Uh, they physically do the work and they like, right. I guess my understanding is it's correct. Yeah. They would like audit companies and basically check who's paying their tax, who isn't. Yes. That's hundred percent right. And, like, and receive the tax and then uh, pay people's like tax returns and they actually administer it. Yes. Good. So, uh, yeah, so... Who's... Sorry. Say that again. I, I... Who would set the tax? I think, would it not be something legal with the court and like a board? No, no, no. It's not legal. It's government. Government sets the tax. Parliament. Okay, parliament. There we go. Okay, rules and laws of the country. Um, government sets the taxes. They create the rules. Okay. Okay, so the, the finance minister is actually responsible for all of these rules and laws. Because remember... Uh, the fin oh, finance, finance, the finance minister. Okay, national treasury, actually. I can even replace this with treasury, the word treasury. Okay, national treasury is ultimately responsible for those rules and laws of the country. Because treasury is where all the money is sitting, basically. All right, so the finance minister, the finance minister is actually sitting in national treasury in Pretoria. Okay, and then okay. SARS is just the body that, that uh, as you said, the, it's the body that does the work. Okay, so government would be like the brain, okay, or the head, okay, and then SARS would be the body. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, because obviously they set all the rules. They think about the rules and laws. They make sure that the rules and laws are fair and that, and that, um, and that it's not um, breaking the law in any way. When I say the law... Uh, it's not against the, any of the rights, the human rights, the constitution, all of that stuff. Um, but SARS applies the rules. So administer means to apply. Happy with that? Yes. Okay. So what set of rules and laws do we have to follow? There's the answer. We are going to be looking at the Income Tax Act. Okay. It was initially legislated back in 1962. Okay, there have been changes and alterations and there are different versions of it. So they always talk about um, like number, the number, whatever it is. Okay, so I've just left it basic just so that um, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be updated every single time they change it. They, they don't change it often. 
Okay, but they do change it from time to time. And when I say change, it's normally addition. So for example, uh, we spoke about capital gains, um, CGT, capital gains tax. Okay, this was something that was added, okay, as an addition to the Income Tax Act because we never ever had capital gains tax, but now we do. Um, so those are things that you, that you amend and that you change, right? And those things get passed through Parliament. Parliament is, is, um, is the body. Okay, you spoke about a board. Okay, there's no board. Okay, in government, we don't talk about a board of directors. In a company, we talk about a board of directors. In government, we talk about Parliament. Okay, so in Cape Town, Parliament sits in Cape Town. Okay, Parliament is um, responsible for passing those rules and laws of the country. Okay, so... Uh, must the country budget? Yeah. Yes. Of course, the country has to budget. And we spoke about the budget speech. Okay, that's the budget that we're referring to. Okay, on the next page, you've got the Income Tax Act. Um, uh, let me ask you this. Um, in terms of law, the law that you've covered, um, ha have you looked at any of the acts? Maybe Companies Act, I'm assuming. Uh, I don't think we did Companies Act. Or maybe it wasn't a big part of it. Okay, interesting. Uh, normally, um, yeah, as part of a BCom, um, you, would, you would get introduced to the Companies Act at some point in time. In accounting, they also cover it, but it's, it's, it's different in terms of context. In accounting, it's more about disclosure of information. But um, the Companies Act is very important in terms of rules and laws, um, that the company needs to follow in terms of how it operates. Um, and that's normally covered in either tax on its, uh, well, tax to some degree because it does affect ta tax, but more so uh, in terms of operations or uh, management. Uh, so operations, operations management, that type of thing. So if you didn't cover it specifically in the law subject, and uh, you might have maybe just looked at it briefly, as you said, Ja. Yeah, because I don't remember it being a very big part okay all right so when you look at the income tax act you will see that there are different chapters there are different parts there are different sections and you get paragraphs and sub paragraphs um, and i'll show that to you just now when we look at the study guide the study guide does show you uh what the income tax act looks like but it's a very 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 high level view but at least it's something okay you're not required to buy the income tax act so you don't have to worry um, it's not something that you have to be too worried about. But if you do go further and you cover tax as a separate subject, definitely at a third year level, then they're going to uh, they're, they're going to start requiring you to actually purchase the legislation and actually go through it in detail. Um, so with tax, you do need to refer to law, okay, and its cases and acts. Okay, so not only acts, but also cases, case law and acts. Do you know whether legislation is set in stone or not? Is legislation set in stone? No. Why not? Uh, because I feel like there are some cases... Okay, wait, I don't know, okay, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, but say if you had a problem, okay, Yes. And you can find where the court decided against it or a different choice you can use that. Am I making sense? You are. Okay. Law of precedent. Ooh, my spelling. Let me go back and check the spelling. Sorry, I don't know. Uh, there. Precedent. Okay, that makes sense. It's a C, not a S. Okay, precedent. Okay, the law of precedent. That's exactly right. Okay, so you're, you're referring to the cases that have come before. Yes. Um, are you a fan of Suits? Yes. Have you ever watched yes. that series? Yes, okay, from yeah, beginning uh, to end. Yeah, it, it, it's a bit outdated now. Obviously, it's um, the seasons, I mean, all the series, I should say. The series has concluded and all of that. But um, if you've ever watched that uh, TV program, um, you'll see that they even refer to, like they refer to cases, this case or that case, or they refer to this act yeah. or that act. 
And that's exactly yes. what this is all about. Okay, when we talk about legislation, legislation is talking about all of the cases and the acts together. Is it set in stone? The answer is no. Okay, because it changes. It, 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 um, it gets better, okay, because more cases come up and more judgments are made and then this rule of precedent gets, gets stronger in a way. Okay, I don't know if that makes sense. So obviously, yeah. uh, law, law back in the day is not as good as law today because the law of precedent yeah. helps improve it going on and on and on because you get different cases. They're not every case is the same. So with more cases, you get more scenarios and then you can actually understand what the judgment is going to be because every situation is different. And then they use the law of precedent to help with later cases. Um, and that's kind of what you were saying in terms of what you were, what we were trying to communicate, which is which is which is perfectly correct. Okay, does it make sense? Yes. Good. Okay, so what does SARS do to help with that precedent? Well, SARS issues practice notes, right? And this is part of the legislation. It's not it's not official though, so you just need to be careful. Okay, uh, it's practice notes. SARS gives practice notes in terms of their interpretation. Okay, notice it's an interpretation. Interpretation means how SARS will interpret the law. Okay, remember the law is subject to someone's interpretation. And that's why law to some degree is subjective, but it's meant to be as objective as possible. Okay, did that statement make sense? Yes. Okay. I, you know, I, I get what you're yeah, objective means it's factual, okay, but sometimes it boils down to how you interpret those facts. Yes. And and, and yes. that's where the disputes come up. And the reason why like I'm discussing disputes now is because in the textbook they also talk about dispute resolutions and how do you dis how do you raise complaints to SARS? How do you dispute matters with SARS? Right. It all comes down to interpretation because you might say, well, I can claim this. But SARS says, no, you can't see it. it, it there's a dispute and then it goes to court and then a judgment is made. And then they say, OK, this is what you must do. So law of precedent is obviously the first uh, or cases. OK, the acts, the acts is obviously the first thing. And then if you can't find an act, then you go to the case law. If you can't find a case, then you go to the SARS practice notes. And if that doesn't work, then you have to dispute it. Okay. Okay. All right. So just to summarize, we spoke about SARS's role. Okay. SARS is autonomous and they're independent. Why? Why are they separate? Why aren't they part of government? Why are they separate from government? Do you know? Because they don't make decisions. Well, they do. SARS will make their own decisions based on their own uh, function, their own... So, for example, SARS will decide whether someone needs to be audited or not. Government doesn't do that. But government is obviously separate. Why is it separate? Why is SARS and government separate? It's actually quite important to, to, to understand that, like, segregation. Do you know why? Okay, then No. Uh, because you can't have the person collecting the money also spending the money. Conflict okay. of interest, segregation of duties. Uh. Okay, so segregation of duties and to avoid a conflict of interest. Okay, because SARS, they administer the rule of law. Government creates the rule of law. Right? If they were one and the same, okay, then you've got like ultimate power because now you set the rules and you administer the rules. So in other words, you're making the rules and you're administering the rules. It can become... Uh, so uh, uh, it's yeah. It, it comes down to um, uh, what's the uh, f uh, philo is it what philosophy? Okay, where um, it's like ethics. Comes it comes down to ethics. Okay, the reason why you have to have separate bodies is because of upholding good ethics, upholding good governance, upholding good everything. Okay, it's just it's it's, it's segregation of duties. Okay. Okay. Are we alright? Yes. Okay. 
National Treasury, there's the note about it. South African tax regime is set by Treasury, administered by the Commissioner. Who is the Commissioner? Is the Commissioner part of Treasury or is the Commissioner part of SARS? SARS? Yes, the Commissioner. So they talk about the SARS Commissioner, the Tax Commissioner. Okay, before that was Praveen Gordon. Um, now it's, uh, what's the guy's name? Um, uh, yo, I forget now. Uh, I think it's Van Heerden or something like that. Uh, we can Google and check. Tax Commissioner. SARS Commissioner. Who's the SARS Commissioner? Uh, oh, Keys Wetter. There's it. Yeah, Keys Wetter. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Keys Wetter. Keys, Keys Wetter is the um, Commissioner of, of SARS. Okay. 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 And then, finance minister is obviously Mr. Mbueni. Finance minister there. Okay. Finance minister, Mr. Mbueni. Uh, ooh, why didn't he, he didn't pop up? He should have. Okay. There's he there. Finance minister there. Tita Mbueni. Medium term budget. That was last year. Okay, yeah, he'll deliver the budget next week. Okay. All right, does that make sense? Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay, so if you go to the SARS website, you'll see you have individuals here, you've got businesses here, you've got tax practitioners, and then you've got customs and excise. See, the two go together. Okay, when you're looking at the SARS website, this body... Okay, SARS is not government. SARS is a separate body or a separate institution of government. Okay, they're totally separate. They're totally independent. Okay, they're not run and controlled by government. They have their own mandate. They have their own, um, like, uh, how can I put it? They have their own decision-making authority. That makes sense. Okay, they're not the same institution. SARS is part of government, but SARS is not government. You need to make that distinction. Okay, because, um, uh, so for example, I don't know if you're following any of the court cases and stuff that government is um, involved in, but one of the cases that went to, um, that went to the, I think it went to the appeals court even, um, the, um, uh, what do they call it again? Uh, public prosecutor, the public prosecutor, the national public prosecutor wanted information from SARS. Uh, let me just find the article. National Prosecutor uh, wanting info from SARS. Okay, this, this court case actually went to the Court of Appeal even. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a bit outdated, but... Ooh, where is it? It didn't come up when I searched for it. Um, public prosecutor. Let's try that. Public prosecutor. Wanting info. Ooh, my spelling. Public prosecutor wanting info from SARS. Public. Yeah, NPA. Maybe. Let's try public. Public. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Here, yeah, there we go. Here's it. Okay, public prosecutor may not subpoena Zuma's tax records. Okay, this was something that actually went to a higher court, um, and and they had to they had to um, pay legal costs for it because the public prosecutor wanted information on Zuma's tax records. Okay, and 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 remember, SARS is not government. SARS is separate from government. So notice, the public prosecutor is part of government. Okay, so uh, what's her name? Busi Siwe. Busi Siwe is the public prosecutor. Okay, so she wanted to access records on Zuma's tax records. But where do the tax records sit? Here, they sit with SARS. Can government go look up anyone's tax records? No, they can't. Government can't do that because government is separate. SARS is separate. SARS is a separate authority on its own. Okay, SARS also has to follow certain rules and laws. Um, SARS cannot disclose the tax information on individuals or companies, okay, unless 
they are mandated to by the court of law or unless there's certain investigations. Okay, but you can't just ask. Government can't just say, I want to see your tax records and then they can just get that information or I want to see that person's tax records. They can't do that. Okay, because if they could, government would have ultimate power because whatever, whatever they, they want, they can get. If they want tax affairs on anyone, they'd be able to get that information. Do you see why it's so important to keep it separate? Yes. Okay, you can't set the rules, you can't administer the rules, and then you can't also spend the money that you're collecting from the citizens. Okay, because that's, that's effectively what you would be doing if everyone was combined. Okay, so this is very important, and this is something that you'll pick up on. Um, if you read the textbook, the textbook will elaborate and they'll go into more depth. Um, if you look at the study guide, they refer you to the textbook. Um, this is just stuff that you need to be mindful of, okay, when you're, when you're reading through different cases. Because some cases aren't part of governments. Those cases are actually with the revenue, with SARS. Okay, so when they talk about the Commissioner of Inland Revenue or the Secretary of Inland Revenue, they're referring to SARS. They're not referring to governments. Okay, remember SARS goes to court when people have disputes. Okay, if you have a dispute with, uh, with, with the tax, okay, you don't go to government, you go to SARS. Okay, you're not going to go to your provincial government and say, I don't agree with my tax records. Uh, I shouldn't be paying so much tax. I should be paying less. Okay, you don't go to government. You go to SARS. Okay, if there's a problem with the roads, you go to government. You don't go to SARS. Because what does government do? Government fixes the potholes in the roads. SARS doesn't. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, SARS collects the money. That money goes to National Treasury. National Treasury then uses that money to build roads or to fix roads. Okay. Happy with that? Yes. Awesome. Okay, we're almost there in terms of the notes. and Then we can go quickly to your study guide and we can just wrap up and we can look at what they've provided you with there. Um, I've tried to answer these questions okay, in as much detail as I can without giving you too much. Okay, because this will be covered later on when we, when we talk more about the actual taxes that people need to pay. Okay, something very important that, need, that you need to differentiate is residence-based tax versus non-residence-based tax. Okay, what does that mean? Well, okay, Cheryl, are you a South African citizen? Yes. Okay, you are considered a resident of the country. Because you're currently in South Africa, okay? If you are working in South Africa, the money that you are earning in South Africa will be taxed. And if you had money coming from another country, you would also be taxed on that because you're considered a resident. Okay, a resident is taxed on their worldwide income. Right, that's residence-based taxes. Right, so if you are considered a resident of South Africa, they don't care where you get your income from. If your income comes from five other countries, you are going to pay taxes in South Africa on all the income from all those countries. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. That's but what happens if you live, if say you're a resident of South Africa or um, a citizen of South Africa and you live in a different country see now you're talking about non-resident taxes because um you could be a resident but if you aren't living in the country and now now we're taking it a step further because now you're talking about uh, they call this the physical presence test okay i've got a note about this in one of my slides okay where you have to be physically present in the country for a certain number of days in the in the in the year to be considered a resident. So for example, let's assume you are a qualified pilot and you are flying around the world 365 days and all your destinations are outside of the country. That means you spend zero days in South Africa. Okay, the problem comes in though in terms of your resident status. Okay, because they talk about, uh, okay, I don't want to get into the detail now because it's just too much. But if, you're, if you still believe you're a resident of the country, you could have been out of the country for, for 365 days. So in other words, zero days in, in South Africa. Because you love South Africa so much 
and you will always come back to South Africa because South Africa is your home and it's it's your resident um, status. Okay, so even if you're outside the country for so long, you can still be considered a resident. But you have this pre this physical presence test because sometimes you can be deemed. Okay, notice the words I'm using, deemed. You're deemed to be a non-resident if you meet the criteria. Because if you are outside the country for 365 days and you spend zero days in the country, it would be unfair to tax you as a resident if all the income you were earning were from all the countries that you were visiting. Right, and, and that's where it gets very complicated. And then the rules get quite specific. And I've tried to share some of it with you in this subject, but I haven't given you too much. But non-residents, just to keep it simple, okay, a non-resident will only be taxed on income earned in the country or from the country. And that's the difference. So if you have an American, okay, let's assume you have an American coming to South Africa. And they're going to work 10 days in South Africa and they're going to fly back to America. Okay, but they're physically in South Africa and they're physically working in South Africa for 10 days. Okay, that non-resident would only have to pay tax on the income that was earned from South Africa in those 10 days. Okay, assuming it was income during those 10 days. Does that make sense? Yes. Because as a citizen... They're paying uh, taxes in the U.S. So it would be unfair for them to pay tax on all their U.S. income. Because for the other 355 days, they were in America, okay? And they were earning income in America. So, uh, so South, the South African government would not be allowed to tax that non-resident on all their American income. Because that would be unfair. Okay, and okay. then you do... Pardon? Sorry, say that again? No, you said okay. Okay, you said okay. Okay, you do get yes. DTAs. A double tax agreement is when countries have arrangements in place. So now the US will have an arrangement with South Africa. Because you might have someone working in the US and working in South Africa. And they travel back and forth frequently. And then we need to look at these types of things. Double tax agreements. Okay, or what happens if you have a company and the company has operations in the U.S. and operations in South Africa? Okay, that's where it becomes very complicated. And that's where you need to bring in those tax specialists because they deal with those types of agreements. Okay, those double tax agreements that exist between countries. There is a really great summary on page 17. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to show it to you just now. Um, I will reference the classifications. The reason why I'm referencing it is because they've summarized the direct taxes, indirect taxes, and they've even shown um, the different uh, methods of taxing. So when you, when you look at the system, okay, what system do we use in South Africa? Do you, do you have any idea? No. Okay, you get different systems. You get proportional, progressive, and regressive. Proportional means everyone pays a percentage. Progressive means the more you earn, the more you pay. Regressive means the more you earn, the less you pay. Which system do you think we have in South Africa? All of them? No, we don't have all of them. We have one of them. Which one do we apply because in South Africa? I know progressive is also pay as you earn. The more you earn, the more you pay. Yes, that's right. That's progressive, correct. Yeah, South Africa, okay. we use... Okay, I'm referring to an individual, obviously. Okay, if it's, if oh. it's a, a, a company, a company pays a percent, a proportional. Okay, so yeah, you're not wrong if you're saying um, some... Not all of them. We don't have the system. That, that system doesn't exist in South Africa. Okay, the more you earn, okay. the less you pay. Okay, we don't have that in this country. Okay, the more you earn, the more you pay. And we also have a portion of, you, of what you earn. Okay, and those two systems are applied in South Africa. Okay, so it's either a percentage or it's a sliding scale. Happy with that? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, remember those things because we'll see it just now in the notes. Again, here's a great summary from the actual study guide highlighting the dispute res resolution process. Right, so if you're not happy with your 
taxable liability, your tax income, your taxable income and your tax liability. Are you allowed to dispute it? Yes, you are. Okay, but you have to follow the process. So as a taxpayer, okay, your first step is to obviously lodge an objection. Right, so let's assume, um, Cheryl, okay, you are employed, okay, you're a pilot. Okay, pilots get paid very, very handsomely, okay, or elegantly. I'll, I'll use that because you're obviously a lady. Okay, so you're going to earn really well as a pilot. Okay, let's assume your annual salary is two million, okay, all right, and you are going to be paying taxes on that salary, okay, and there is a dispute. All right, so there's a dispute because maybe it, it even could be based on that whole resident type thing. Okay, you are flying across the world, you have spent zero days in South Africa, you've been abroad for 365 days, you don't believe you should be taxed like a resident, you believe you should be taxed like a non-resident. What's your first remedy or your first step in remedying the situation? It would be to lodge an objection. Okay, so you need to put a notice of objection. It's a form that you need to fill in with SARS. Okay, notice we're raising this with SARS because who administers the rule of law? SARS or the government? SARS. SARS, correct. Okay, SARS administers the rule of law. According to the rule of law, there's a physical presence test, and I think it's called a natural person's test. I, I, I stand to be corrected, but um, I, they, they do call it a natural person, okay, and we'll get there it's in one of the notes. Okay, but I'm just using NPT to refer to the natural person. Okay, the PPT one is the one that they used to test. Okay, how many days did you spend in the country um, and then they use that to determine your residency when you when you submit your return. Okay. Um, when you look at the objection, okay, SARS will look at your objection and they will decide. Do they agree? Did they make a mistake? If they disagree and they say no, sorry, we didn't make any mistake applying these tests, and we believe you do need to be taxed according to an, a resident, not a non-resident. Are you allowed to appeal? Of course you are. Okay, if you still don't agree with the objection, uh, well, when I say objection, if you still don't agree with the feedback, okay, the response, the, the response to your objection, then you can appeal it. Okay, if the appeal doesn't work and SAR says no, they still disagree, then you have to look at alternative dispute resolution processes. What's your process going to involve? Well, you're going to take it to the tax board. Okay, the tax board will deal with tax issues. If you don't agree with the tax board and they still, they still say no, sorry, they're still, they, they're still believing SARS, they still agree with SARS, but you are still adamant that it's not correct. Where can you go? You can go to the courts. Okay, now we're taking it further. If you still don't agree with the judgment from the tax court, you can take it further and further. Okay, the furthest it can go is the constitution. Okay, Constitution Hill, basically. Okay, where where all our rights were, the Bill of Rights were were um were created. All right. So there are certain rights that we have as individuals. Okay, that we all have in South Africa. All right. As long as we're in South Africa, as long as we follow the South African Constitution, we all have those rights. All right. So if you don't agree with SARS and you believe that SARS is treating you unfairly, and you believe it's against your rights then you're going to take it to the constitutional court. That's the highest court in the land. Okay, does this make sense? Are you happy with the background, with the story I'm telling? Uh, this week is like story time. There's no calculations, there's none of that. Um, next week, we can start with some of that. But um, this week is all story time. It's story time with, with, with um, tax um, as the context. Yes, I'm fine with that. Is that all right? Okay. Um, did you cover any of that in your law subject, the different courts? Yes. Okay, that's good. Right, because then you'll have an idea of how that system works. Okay, you, you, you're never going to be tested on the detail here, but you need to understand the dispute resolution. Okay, so remember, the first step is to deal with it with SARS. Okay, so it's you or the company versus SARS. If it needs to be taken further, then you go to court and then you start getting those cases. Okay, remember those case law? 
case, case law, cases, right, this is where you start getting this cases. Then you'll get like um, X, okay, person X versus um, in, inland revenue, okay, the commission of inland revenue. Those are the type of things that could come up. In terms of the lodging of your objection, okay, SARS gives you 30 days to object, right, when you've got your assessment, okay, so when you submit your return, and they've assessed your return, um, in, in practical everyday term, uh, let's just say income tax, okay, so for an individual, okay, you'll get an ITA 34, okay, that's your, yeah, that's your assessment, Right, so that's after you've submitted your tax return. Okay, then they assess your tax return, they look at your information, and then they give you an assessment. This is how much you owe us, or this is how much we owe you. And then you have 30 days to object if you're unhappy with that assessment. If you don't object, well, then it's, it's seen as you've accepted it. Okay, you accept the assessment, and everyone's happy. You pay what's due, or they pay you what's, um, what's due in terms of a refund and then everyone continues on their, um, their, 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 their everyone continues their day basically taxpayers must specify the grounds of objection okay this is very important because do you agree if you're not required to specify the grounds of objection then don't you think everyone will object yes Okay, so now SARS doesn't want that to happen. So uh, we talk about a burden of proof. This is something else that you might have covered in law. What is the burden of proof? Do you know what that is? Who does the burden of proof lie with? <clears throat> uh, the person who's objecting. Exactly, 100%. Okay, so what does that mean? I, guess, I, I don't think I've, we went over it, but from the name... People wouldn't want to go get proof to objectify, or it's too much of work. Okay, yeah. So you can't. That, uh, you're on the right track. Okay, so if you object, you can't. You can't expect SARS to provide proof or evidence because they're not objecting. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so another way of looking at it would be facts. All right. So if you object, you need to show the facts. You need to show the evidence. Does that make sense? Yes. That's exactly what we're looking at here. So the burden of proof lies with the person making the objection. Okay, because you can't object and then and then and then say, well, okay, I object and then what? Okay, you have to object and there, there has to be grounds for the objection. So you need to say, well, I don't agree with this because blah 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 blah. Okay. And that's what you need to submit when you do the submission. Okay, so you need to show all the grounds for the objection. Tell SARS and show SARS and provide evidence to SARS, tell them why they've done something incorrect, and then they will look at it, and then they will decide. Okay, if they decide that they have still, um, they've, they've still administered the tax rule of law correctly, then you need to appeal. Okay, how many days do you have? Same number of days. You've got 30 days to appeal. This is the notice of appeal. Right, so if you don't agree with the, with the outcome, okay, in terms of the objection, then you can appeal, right? If you appeal, then we're starting to take it further, right? Now we're going to get some lawyers involved and we're going to go to court, right? So tax is very rule-based, okay? Keep it simple. Those cases, the ones that we see, are cases that have actually gone through the process of taking a matter further because they disagreed with SARS, Sometimes the judgments are correct and they win the cases. Sometimes the judgments are lost and they lose the cases. But the point is, those cases help us because it helps to motivate our, our stance. Okay? Or it, 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 it provides us with that grounds for objection. Okay? And that's why it's so important if you are involved in law. I don't know if you know any lawyers. But if you know any lawyers, lawyers are very like factual people and they're very like, um, uh, yes, there's a gray area. Not all lawyers are good lawyers. You do get ones that are a bit dodgy and stuff. But the point is that lawyers always have to motivate and have to substantiate everything based on facts. Okay, that's always how they operate. 
All right, and, and, and that's something that they have to do because if they, um, if, they, if they win a case, that case is only won based on the evidence. And that's why evidence is so important. Okay, it's like watching suits. Okay, when they, when they go to court, what do they always do? They bring evidence, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, it's a bit different because it's, it's America. Um, so in America, you have a jury and you have to convince the jury, etc., etc. In South Africa, you only have to convince the judge. All right, and this is the last slide. This is something that we are going to see a lot when we do calculations later on. Okay, I think next week there's one or two um, just to get you started, but there's nothing this week. This week is just all um, story time, just learning more about tax, learning more about government, understanding what the legislation is and how the legislation is applied. And then later on, we'll, we'll deal with the practical. Okay, tax year, notice, individuals. March to February. We spoke about this earlier. Okay. What is the current tax year that we are in? Can you give me the dates and the years? The current tax years that we're in. Yeah. What is the current tax year that we are in? So it would be 1 March 2020 to 28 Feb 2021. Correct. Good. That's the tax year. Perfect. Okay, so when you're looking at this tax year, okay, I'm going to draw a little timeline. After the tax year has closed, so when we get to the 28th of February 2021, this tax year will close. And then afterwards, now we need to do our tax return. The tax return is a form of reconciliation. It's a recon. Okay, you've done a bank recon in the past, right? A, a reconciliation yes. is like a process of checking. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so once the tax year has closed, afterwards, okay, you, you then submit your return after you've got your IRP5, etc. Okay, I'm still referring to an individual. Okay, and that gets done later on in, in, in the year. Um, around October, November, somewhere around there, they open the tax season and they allow you to submit your tax return. And that's the whole reconciliation process that happens later on in the year. Okay, and I've tried to draw that for you on a diagram, okay, on one of your slides. Just remember, when you're doing calculations, income is what you're receiving from different sources of income. So that could be um, maybe rendering a, uh, rendering a service, um, selling a product, um, using an asset, okay, renting out an asset, whatever it is. Deductions and allowances are things that you take off, so you subtract from your income. So are deductions and allowances good? No. Do you want to make your income smaller? No. Yes, you do. You want to make your income smaller because you don't want your taxable income to be higher. So if you're a pilot and you're earning $2 million a year, okay, do you want to be taxed on 2 million or would you be taxed on 1 million? What do you rather want to be taxed okay, on? 1 million. 1 million. Exactly. Do you agree? So deductions and yeah. allowances are good because they reduce your taxable income. Notice the word taxable is there, not just income. Do you see the difference? Yes. Okay. So when we're doing practical questions, our job is to get the taxable income. Once we've got the taxable income, now we apply the tax tables. And then you're going to go to this thing. Here's your tax tables. Uh, where's the individual one? Here's it. Okay, I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it. Okay, if you're a pilot and you're earning $2 million a year, okay, we are going to tax you according to this bracket. Okay. 45%. Yeah, 45% above this threshold. Okay, so on the first 1.5 million, okay, you're still going to get all the benefits. So your first 205,900 is only going to be taxed at 18%. So you don't lose that benefit. Okay, even though you're earning yeah. 2 million as a pilot, you're still going to get 18% on the first 205,000. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so that's why I'm referring to it as a sliding scale. Ooh, sliding. Okay, and this is a progressive tax system. You'll see it in the notes just now when we look at that summary. 
Okay, progressive means the more you earn, the more you pay. Okay, so if you're earning two million a year, you're going to pay five hundred and fifty-nine thousand four hundred and sixty-four. This is the tax on the first one point five million, basically. Okay, then the difference, the additional amount. Okay, the two million minus the one five seven seven three zero zero, the balance. That balance is going to be taxed at forty five percent. Okay. Do you see how the system works? Yes. Okay, and that's how it works. So it's a it's fair. This system is fair because everyone gets taxed according to the same table. Okay. The only problem with this is when you start moving brackets. Now you're starting to get taxed on the additional amount. Okay, so if you earn more than this amount, now you're going to get taxed on 45%. Just because you earn 2 million doesn't mean you're going to get taxed on 2 million because 2 million times 45%, okay, is a lot. Uh, let yeah. me just work it out quickly. 2 million times 45% is almost, it's 900,000. Okay, can you imagine paying 900,000 of your gross income to SARS? Okay, that's, that's a little bit, that seems a bit excessive, right? Yeah, that is a lot. Okay, but it's not that excessive because you're still getting the benefits here. Okay, so you're only going to get paid, you're only going to get charged or taxed 559. Okay, so if it's 2 million, okay, you'll pay 559464 plus the 45,000, uh, not 45,000, 45% of the what is it approximately four hundred thousand four hundred and something thousand four hundred and twenty twenty two thousand plus minus does that make sense yes okay and that's how the system works this is a progressive tax system and that's what i'm trying to show you here because if you're looking at two million as being your gross income you might not get taxed on all of that because there are deductions and allowances that you can claim. I can claim medical aid. I can claim pension contributions. I can claim retirement annuity contributions. So hopefully, this two million in terms of gross package is going to come down to maybe one million that's actually going to be taxed. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so notice in this actual diagram, Okay, we're looking at the actual tax that individuals are going to end up paying, and it's taxable income. Notice taxable income, not income. Your package might be two million, but because of all your deductions, it might only come out to a million. Then you're still sitting in that bracket. That's why it's good to have more deductions because you don't want to end up paying more tax, you want to end up paying less tax. Right. You don't want to pay more to SARS, you want to pay less to SARS, as long as you're in line with the rules and you're not breaking any rules. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so you'll see all of this later on when we look at more practical examples. Um, let me go back to my PowerPoint. The last bit here is the calculation of the tax liability. Notice this slide has the word liability. This slide has the word income. There's a difference. Okay, taxable income is how much income is subject to the tax tables. Tax liability, use the tax tables to work out the tax owed to SARS. Okay, that's why we've got the word liability. Okay, so just because you are earning two million a year doesn't mean you're going to pay tax on two million a year. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, it all comes down to this calculation. All right, we need to use deductions and allowances to reduce the taxable income. Notice though, you do have to add any taxable capital gain. All right, so if you sold a house and you made a nice big profit on the sale of that house, that profit which is a capital gain, will be included. That's going to increase your taxable income. Some things decrease your taxable income, some things increase your taxable income. Those things you'll learn about in separate chapters. Income is a separate study unit. Deductions and allowances is a separate study unit. 
taxable capital gains, it's its own separate study unit. Okay, I, I really like this course, this tax 261, because it's really structured quite well. They basically take this and they break it up into different chapters. And then by the time you get to the end of the course, you'll know exactly how tax works. Okay, but we're still early days. As long as you're comfortable with this equation, okay, I'm referring to it as, a, as an equation because it's a template, it's a, for, it's, 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 a, it's a tool. Okay, this is the format, this is how we do it. Okay, happy with that? Yes. Perfect. The last part of the tool requires you to use the tax tables. Okay, those tax tables will vary depending on what type of taxpayer you're looking at. If it's an individual, you would use this table. Individual. If it's a special trust, you would use this table as well. If it's a company, then you use the tables on the next page. Here. If it's a company, we use this. Okay, if it's a special company, if it's a small business corporation, then we use this. If it's a micro business, then we use this. Right, so do you see it's, it's, uh, there are different tables that can be used in different situations. Okay, but the working is the same. The working is the working is the working. You're going to have to do a working for the tax and you're going to have to do a working for the taxable income. They're different though. Taxable income is different from tax liability or tax refund. Okay, and that's very important to take away uh, uh, from this week's content. Okay, making sense. Happy so far? Yes. Okay, there's that little note, progressive tax system. You'll see it in the, in the notes just now when we just referenced it. Um, I'm asking you to please look at the budget speech. Okay, um, there's another reason why I wanted to start earlier because... I didn't want you to miss the budget speech because uh, most students probably don't watch the budget speech because they don't care or they don't know what's happening or they don't know its relevance. Okay, because you know the relevance, because you do care now about the budget speech because it is going to affect you as an individual. Okay, it might not infect, uh, it might not affect you directly. It might inf affect you indirectly, but it's still going to affect you. Um, so it's really, really, really important, especially for a subject like this. Um, to have a look at the budget speech because of its impact on the tax calculations. All right, this is the last bit. This is just something that I want you to do for next week, okay? Discussion example. Okay, we don't have time to discuss it today. I'm going to ask you um, for it next week. Okay, I have a, a, a slide on it where we can discuss in more detail. Okay, this is, this is building on to study unit 2's content. Okay, I want you to tell me as much as you can what can happen during the tax year? Anything. And, and try to be as creative as possible. I mean, you, you can literally think about anything you want. You, you, can, you can go crazy here. Okay? But I want to see how many points you, you bring up that will be relevant to different sections that we'll cover later on uh, in the course. Okay? So that I'm going to leave you to do. Tell me everything you can, stuff that can happen during the tax year. Notice only this part. Okay? Don't worry about this part. We'll discuss it. Okay, that's when you complete the tax year and then we start looking at the tax return. Okay, the tax return will only be done after the tax year has completed. Okay, activities. You can have a look at the textbook and the study guide. I'm going to quickly go to the study guide and just quickly run through it just to see if I've covered all the important points. Um, I think this is the right one. Yes. Okay. Learning unit one. You'll see it's very short. It's, it's seven pages. Okay. It's all background. It's all contents. Um, I'm not going to go to the first bit. That's obviously background regarding um, Eunice's um, course. I'm just going to jump to page 10. Here. Learning unit one. Okay. In learning unit one, we're looking at the introduction to the South African tax system. Okay. This week is all about just understanding. Do you know how the system works? Do you know the different types of taxes? Do you know what the difference is between taxable income versus taxable liability or tax liability? Okay, they've given you some background. Um, you can have a look at this. They're talking about the role that government has to play and how all of us have to contribute in terms of tax. Um, the program, the learning outcomes. Okay, this is very similar to what we saw on, on screen. Okay, uh, the learning outcomes that I've put on screen um, uh, I took that from the textbook as well as the uh, study guide. Okay, so it's a combination of the two. Um, and then prescribed material, 
there's no prescribed chapter. Interesting. Okay. Um, I would look at the, the textbook. There, there is going to be more information. I know the old textbook had some information about it, where they spoke about the structure. Okay, but I see in, in this study guide here, they're, they're referencing, um, they're, they're not referencing a chapter, which is odd. Okay, there, there must be something in the new textbook referring to what we s discussed earlier today. Okay, telling you a little bit more about the tax system, telling you a bit more about the structure. Okay, it might have just been part of an introduction, perhaps, in one of the chapters. Maybe they're not referring you to a specific chapter uh, because it's covering other things as well. Okay, but just have a look at the textbook and see what you can find. Okay, what we've covered today is enough. Um, you'll see here they've given you something similar. See, there's it there as well. Okay, there's the list. Okay, they've pulled out all of the different types of taxes, levies, etc., duties. Okay, that's good. There's it there. Um, understand the application of taxes that we've discussed. Okay, there is a podcast that you can obviously have a look at if you, if you need to. Okay, the Income Tax Act. Okay, quick summary. Tell me, what is the Income Tax Act, Cheryl? Uh, it's basically tax on your income. Hello. But what, what is the act? Uh, put it in context. What is the act? What, what is the act? Uh, like, what do you mean? Like, the, the more you earn, the more you pay, or... No, the act. What, is the, what does an act serve as? A legislation. Yes, yeah. Legislation, nice word. I would have gone with rules. Okay. Okay, the act is the rules. Okay, so when we look at course content, all the stuff that they're giving us comes from the act. Okay, it comes from this. Okay. Rules, provisions, all of that. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, what does the act look like? Here's it. Uh, let me just rotate quickly so you can see it nicely. Um, can I rotate? I should be able to. Yes, there. Rotate clockwise. Okay, you don't have to look at the act, but I'm just showing you the summary in the actual textbook. Okay, well, study guide. You'll see there are different chapters. Each chapter deals with a different um, consideration. Administration, taxes. Um, I apologize for the background noise. I'm not too sure if you can hear the gardener outside. Mm, is, not is, really. there, is there any background noise from your side? Yes. Is there? Okay, I apologize. Yeah, the guy's right outside. Um, he's busy doing gardening work outside. Um, so, okay, he's gone now. It's quiet now. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, yeah, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Um, those are chapters that cover specific things. Administration, then taxes, then provisions. And then you have these schedules. These schedules, first, second, third, fourth, cover specific things that have been added to the act later on. So you'll see... Um, okay, the fifth schedule, okay, they've stopped here. There should be another page. Okay, here's a chair. The eighth schedule is capital gains tax, CGT. Okay, and you have different things. We're not going to look at all of these. And that's why um, tax is a very, very, very involved subject. I mean, you can even, like, if you really like tax, I mean, you can do like a master's or a postgrad or a doctorate in tax on its own. That's how complex and how difficult it can get. Okay, we're keeping it simple. Okay, you're never ever going to have to refer to the actual legislation. You, you're not even required to purchase the actual act. Okay, you can buy these things um, from, from, the, uh, from the bookshops. Um, let me scroll further down. Okay, we need to rotate back to normal. Okay, ooh, why isn't it changing? Okay, let me just rotate, rotate, rotate. Ah. Uh, Let's rotate again and again. Okay. All right. So just be aware that those acts are important. Um, SARS, if you still don't know what SARS is, the textbook or the, the study guide has described it here. Just remember the distinction. Okay. Let me ask you quickly. Is SARS part of government? No. Why not? Uh, conflict of interest. Good. They're separate. They're independent. So there's no conflict of interest. Be careful. Yeah. You said conflict of interest, but you remember we need to avoid the conflict of interest. We don't want conflicts of interest. Do you agree? 
Yes. Okay, so independent is the key. They're a separate body. They're not part of government. They're separate from governments, but they work together. SARS administers the rule of law. Types of taxes, they've described it here. Uh, the summary is over there. Okay, yeah, page 16 is where it starts. Page 17 is the other bit. Okay, I, I see it's changed a little bit. Um, it, it used to be on one page. Now it's split onto two. Okay, so you're just going to have to look at both pages. Uh, let me just shrink it. Okay, what taxes are levied? Method to calculate the tax and who must pay it. Right, remember we spoke about direct and indirect. Here's the summary. If it's direct, you pay it. If it's indirect, someone else pays it. Right, so let me ask you about buying goods at the shop. Okay, um, Cheryl, when you go to the shop and you buy something that has VAT, do you pay SARS the VAT? No. Who pays SARS the VAT? The shop. The store, exactly. Very good. Okay, so indirect, VAT is an indirect tax. Okay, same thing with the fuel levy. Who pays the fuel levy? Do you pay SARS the fuel levy? No. No, the petrol station pays the fuel levy. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, that's indirect. Okay, direct. Income tax, you pay. You pay pay as you earn. You pay capital gains. Okay, you pay income tax. Okay, those are direct taxes. Proportional, progressive, regressive. Proportional we spoke about. Tell me what it is. We saw it earlier. Everyone pays the same amount, or the same Good. percentage of tax. Yeah, I just like to draw that percentage. Everyone pays the same. It's a flat rate. It stays the same. There's no sliding scale. Progressive, the word progressive means to progress. Scale there. Okay, sliding scale. Happy with that? Yes. Okay, and there's the summary. There's the note. Regressive, the tax rate decreases when the income increases. That doesn't exist in South Africa. There's no such tax. They've even written it there as well. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Last thing I want to highlight here is just the taxes. Okay. What taxes can be levied? You get income tax, you get consumption tax, you get wealth tax, and you get other tax. These are just groups that they've grouped it under just to classify it. So for example, estate duty is under wealth tax. Okay. Because you need 30 million rand of assets. Okay. Either less than or greater than depending. Okay, if it's greater than, then it's 25% estate duty. If it's less than, then it's 20%. Okay, uh, it, it all depends on the how, much, how much assets you have. Okay, obviously it's a wealth tax. Consumption, things that I buy. Okay, so if I go on holiday, I'm paying for the airport taxes. Or I'm paying for um, the, yeah, the, air, the airplane. Or even the travel taxes. Okay, the, the, the taxes that you're paying. Income is employee tax, okay, amount that we derive from work. And then you do get others as well. Um, here they've put the dividends, here they've put the fuel levy, here they've put the securities transfer tax, and the property taxes. Okay. All right, I don't think there are any um, self-assessment questions here. Uh, interpretation of law you can have a look at. This I spoke about earlier, uh, where we spoke about the law of precedent. Please make sure you understand that. That's very important for later on when we look at cases. Um, okay, here's the same summary. The summary is still the same. I did check it. It looks good. We spoke about that. Okay, we spoke about the object uh, objections, the 30 days. In multiple choice, they do like to test that, hey? You might even have some of those questions in your first assignment. Um, and then, obviously, 60 days. Okay, this is for the, uh, the objection. So, 30 days and then 30 days. Okay, because here we're looking at the objection. Um, and then later on here, we're looking at the uh, delivery of the taxpayer's objection. Okay, so there's 60 days. So there's an additional 30 days um, in terms of the delivery of that particular uh, objection. Okay, further down, you've got the appeal. Okay, there's the 30 days. All right, then you've got the dispute resolutions, and then they've taken you through the different scenarios. The tax board. Okay, notice there is a different level in terms of um, jurisdiction. That's probably something that you covered in, um, in law. Okay, obviously the bigger the amount, the higher the court you need to go to. That makes sense. Like you also get smaller courts. You get like a small claims court. 
you get like divorce court, you get a family court, you get other courts. These aren't the only courts. We're just looking at tax specific courts. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. So 500,000, if you have disputes less than that, you can go to the tax board. If it's bigger than that, you need to go higher. Okay. Tax courts, Supreme Court, High Court, all of them. And then ultimately, constitutional courts. Okay. Um, here they're just referring to court cases. We will see some in different chapters. Um, this is just the notation that they're referring to. So when you look at this, old cases and new cases. For example, Singh versus the commissioner. Okay, so here you had a client. Okay, you had an individual. Singh. Singh went to the receiver of revenue and they disputed a court, a court case. And it went all the way up until the Supreme Court of Appeal. Same with Stevens. Okay, Stevens also went up against SARS and it went all the way through to the appeals court. Right, um, these could be big cases. Okay, and these could be cases. These, these could be high net worth individuals disputing things relating to their taxes. I don't know what the details are. Okay, but you can find these cases. These cases are, inverted commas, stored. Okay, again, I don't know if you remember suits. Uh, where they have those like files and files of cases. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. Um, so when you have cases, if you're a law firm, law firms have to have to store and keep all the cases that they work on uh, because those cases can be called upon later on depending on the situation. Okay, um, service delivery and procedure. Okay, that's just some admin stuff that you can have a look at there. There's the public protector. I spoke about... Uh, Busi Siwe Nkubwani, um, the, the current public protector. Okay, the public protector is there to ensure that the public ultimately is being treated fairly. They can be brought into certain cases if there are certain considerations regarding um, the fairness of certain um, scenarios, case, situations, cases ultimately. Uh, Office of the Tax Ombud. Do you know what an ombudsman is? Yes, is it? It's a person who would sit as like a neutral person because normally you'd have like uh, someone defending a person or both parties, and then they sit as a middleman. Perfect. Well done. Yeah, it's it's like an arbitrator basically. Yeah. So yes, you get yes, you get yes. different ombudsmen. You get like the banking ombudsman. You get the insurance ombudsman. You get all these different you get ombudsmen. Employees. For employees. Uh, so I don't think you get an employee ombudsman, hey, to be honest. I will have to double check that. I don't think that... And, uh, em remember, employees don't have ombudsmen. They have unions, trade unions. Okay. Yeah, so um, employee ombudsman, uh, I've never heard of that. Okay, I've heard of a tax ombuds, of a banking ombuds. Um, uh, you do get different ombudsmen, but uh, I mean, we can quickly search and check it, but I, I doubt there's an employee ombudsman. That doesn't sound right. Well, we'll check. Employee ombudsman. Is there one? Um, okay, let's just put South Africa because you might get one in a different country. Because I see here, employee ombudsman South Australia. It looks like Australia has one. But I don't know if, if, that, if, that, if that's applicable in South Africa. Uh, yeah, you have an ombudsman for banking services. You have a medical association. Um, I don't think you have something for employees. You have a pension funds adjudicator. You have a consumer watchdog, like an ombudsman for consumer rights and, and that. Yeah, okay, definitely not in terms of employee. Because uh, and the reason why we probably don't have that is because in South Africa we have good employ employment um, rule of law. We have an employment act. Uh, we have a basic. Uh, let me try to remember it now. The Basic Conditions of Employment Act, something like that. Uh, we have very, very good labor laws in the country. So I don't think we have an ombudsman specifically for labor. Um, yeah, I can't find anything. Yeah. All right, is that all right? Yes. Awesome. Okay, and then let's just see what else we had here in the, in the study guide. Uh, okay, calculating the income tax. We're going to do that next week. Uh, I'm going to discuss this in more detail. They've only given you the framework. That's all I need you to know for this week. Just appreciate the format. We're going to use this a lot later on when we do practical questions. Okay, and here's the tax liability. 
Okay, so they've also kept it separate. Keep it separate, they are separate calculations. The one is working out taxable income, the one is working out the liability that's owed or refundable from SARS. And then just a wrap up there at the end, and that's it. Okay, no self-assessment questions here. Okay, uh, in the past they used to have questions. I don't know if they've taken it out or maybe there's just none for this um, study guide. So there's actually nothing for you to do other than just to revise. Uh, maybe I'm going to ask you, let's ask one of these questions. Uh, or if they're short, I'll ask you both. Cheryl, could governments collect income in ways other than through tax? What do you think? Give me your thoughts. We've discussed a lot about tax and how it works in South Africa. Could governments collect taxes from South Africa in other ways? No. Ooh, really? What do you mean? Okay, wait, what do you mean collect taxes? Tax uh, in other ways. income in other ways instead of through tax. Oh, yes. They, can. they can't get taxes in other ways, but they can get income in other ways. Okay, such as? Give me one example. Uh, is it not property where they buy land? Uh, okay, but we're looking at government getting income. I know that they can. Um, okay, but how? Give me an example. Uh, where have you seen, ha has government been able to collect money in other ways, other than tax? They get different forms of income, yes. Such as? Give me an example. You're right, just give me an example. I can't think of an example. But can they not, like, buy land and sell land and do all of these things? Uh, yes, but uh, but that's that's more like like... Um, okay, so I, yeah, that, that, that is valid. Uh, so government can buy and sell assets. Yeah, that, that's fine. That's good. Okay, I was also thinking of like the World Bank and stuff. And getting income from other, or, or like the African Union, and getting assistance through that. I'm just trying to think <laughs> out, out the box. Sorry, say that again? That wouldn't be income, though, if they're getting money from the World Bank. Uh, okay, fair enough. It could be more like a loan, or or maybe <laughs> yeah. maybe it's more like a um, like a support body, or like a like a like more like a goodwill type thing, rather than like loans and stuff. But can they... Yeah. Maybe okay. maybe that's not the best example. I'm just trying to think other ways. Yeah. Okay. And another one: Could South Africa increase VAT? Yes. Definitely. Okay. Those things never, ever stay the same. Okay, VAT actually used to be 10% once upon a time. That's long ago. And then it went to 14, and now it's currently 15. All right, so there are, there's, some, there's, there's quite a lot of history there. Um, obviously, VAT started out, there, 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 there wasn't ever, ever, there wasn't ever VAT, and now there was, and now it's gone up, and now it's currently 15. Okay.